Welcome all to this session on introduction of multi-value integration server. In this session, we are going to cover what is MBIS, what values or use cases it solves, what are the features of MBIS. One of the greatest feature of MBIS is connection pooling. We want to give a kind of a substantial overview of that. And last but not least, to give you an comparison of having connection pool created by oneself as compared to the connection pool available in MVIS, followed by a demo showing how to install MVIS on your system. Let me start with an overview of multi-value integration server. The multi-value integration server is a gateway that extends your business reach and technology options within MV applications. What does that exactly mean? That we enable you to modernize your applications and in that way, you'll be able to reach more business value for your end customers. There is a monitoring part of it where you can monitor the performance of the application and it is thus providing an optimized end user experience for your customers. The system is 24 by seven available and thus provide good SLAs for it. The system is containerized and cloud ready and thus enables you to save a lot of um, cost in providing a, a special infrastructure for the MVI system. Last but not least, this system is performant, has a performant connection pooling. So let's run to the high level MVI's values and use cases, which it solves. The value of multi-value integration server, modernizing application development. So from the topic of modernizing your applications, MVIS enables you to modernize um, your end applications by providing uh, various technology options like REST endpoints, which can be useful uh, for your uh, modernizing process. Um, it provides you in this way, a competitive edge for your end customers that, okay, you can have a modern application which is mobile-based, which is web-based, um, and, uh, you know, uh, acting, uh, running on a cloud. So all of these things are possible with MVIS. It also attracts, uh, you know, young talent in a way that as there are rest endpoints which can be exposed, um, and thus, you, you know, the new talent can really work with um, using these rest endpoints and creating rich, um, and user applications for your use case. Horizontal scaling. So the system is capable enough to scale uh, in, a, uh, in a way, in a performant way, and thus allows you to get an optimized end user experience. The system has enough nuts and bolts to, uh, you know, to maximize the application performance. Also, and optimize license utilization for it. And being a performance system, it allows you to, you know, to have your SLA agreements adhere to it and thus increasing the customer satisfaction. The another part of it is the operational insights and performance monitoring. So um, I think in normal development, we always find when the system is on the production, we, if there is a slowness of the system, we want to know where is it. A lot of companies have their own um, uh, you know, monitoring tools like App Dynamics or Dynatrace to get an information for it. So MVS has its own uh, performance monitoring um, uh, functionality, which will help you at least from the point where the APIs are being hit um, to MVI system till the point that data is being fetched. This is being provided um, to give you much more insights. So you can actually pinpoint potential APIs which are having a problem. Sometimes it's also the case that the, you know, the licenses, number of licenses and the load which you have on your system may, may not be matching. And thus it gives you insights like, hey, I need to in increase the license um, or I need to get more licenses and thus um, you, and it will be much more optimized for it. It allows you to mitigate problems. As I said, that if you're able to prop find problems quickly through our performance dashboard, and that way, in that way, you'll be able to uh, mitigate the problems very early rather than late. And thus, also not most least, it allows you to have a 
um, you know, 24 by 7 service and application availability. The failover support and elastic scaling. So, as I highlighted before, that we, the MBS application ensures that you have a 24 by 7 availability and it has enough nuts and bolts to make sure that you have, um, a, you know, a good SLAs for it. It helps you um, for your continuous development and, you know, updates without customer disruption. So we have enough mechanisms and I will delve into it where you can have, uh, you know, ma your maintenance window or your reconfigurations or your updates being done to your applications um, without affecting or without restarting the entire MBI system. It scales very much properly and with help of external orchestrators, uh, one can have a solution where depending on the load, um, you can scale the solution or have multiple instances. Development flexibility. So, uh, do you know, the, we are able to run the MVI system on an on-prem or on a cloud also. It eliminates your OS dependencies, so in the form of containerization. So you can run it on a Windows, you can run it on a Linux, as long as you're running as a Docker container. We are completely cloud ready. Um, it has been thought from the cloud point of view and it enables, um, you know, to reuse or to tap into the services provided by various cloud providers like the um, storage service or their notification service or their monitoring service. So it has enough hooks added to itself so that uh, you know your end solution, you don't have to have a separate kind of a monitoring thing or uh, a storage kind of configuration for uh, MVS, but it fit seamlessly uh, in, in the existing ecosystem. So let me give you an overview of the features of MVS. So it provides you a modern administration interface. You have a web-based UI or you have REST endpoints to configure, monitor, or administer the MVS. So the, it is very easy to create a REST endpoints in MVS. You can modify connections. Um, I'll delve into it more but take it from the point that you have a, a you know, separate granular configuration per account wise, where you can increase or decrease um, the connections per account uh, wise. It has uh, enough security and with 1.3.0, we have added one more feature into the security bundle. It has a log API and license activity you can monitor that. Um, and it is, as I said, ready for cloud-based services so where one can hook, uh, hook itself to uh, you know to various cloud endpoints like you know uh, cloudwatch or application insights from azure what does a typical requirement of a development team has um, you know when they are creating applications for their end customers they want to develop it quickly and with minimal code and mvis plays a major role in it so you can create your REST endpoints, just selecting on the fields which you want and the REST endpoints are exposed and you can use it. So that is what we meant by the low code or no code approach for it. Another important point is that if you have your existing infrastructure of basic subroutines, your business logic in the form of basic language, this can be easily exposed in MBIs in the form of subroutine endpoints. The modern development has changed in a way that um, you know you have a front-end team and you have a back-end team and normally we used to write documents we used to write contract documents where like hey i'm going to expose this and this endpoint this is how is the model is going to be and everything this is a still a valid philosophy but i think what we ex expectation from the current market is to have a faster turnaround times and what would be nice that if you could expose these things as you develop it you can change your contracts, you can expose them, you can you know, make them available to your end consumer um, a team or your end user applications that, hey, this is the rest endpoint and this is how its, its payload is going to look like. And Swagger is kind of uh, helping you in that. So MVI has support for Swagger. And in this way, you can really understand, hey, this endpoint supports post request, get request, what it, it's, its payload going to be, what are its input parameters, what are its path parameters, and so on and so forth. So that support has been there. It is been there in the uh, MBI system. 
we have a great deployment flexibility. So you can run MVS along with the data server. We can run in a separate machine in a separate uh, apart from the data server. You can run it as a containerized and you can run as a cluster of MVS with a shared configuration. So in case your load or your requirements are there that you want to have serve more customers, you can have a cluster of MVS instances. And we can also run in the cloud with hooks to the various AWS and Azure cloud services. Deployment flexibility. As I said before, you have your <coughs> data server and MVIS the API server co-deciding and your end have your end user application. So it is one constellation which we, we one of the constellations which we support. In this constellation, we see that MVIS can support multiple data servers um, along with it. In this deployment model, MVIS can you know serve um, in case of typical partner point of view multiple customers. So in an MVI system which is in the cloud can talk to for a customer data server which is on the cloud for customer B it is on an on-prem and for customer C is another on-prem. So MVS can serve um, all of these customers um, in one go. So you can have your um, application um, created which is kind of uh, you know used by your end multiple end customers um, and they have the data residing in different uh, constellations like on-prem or on and on cloud as highlighted that you know we have a performance monitoring so what essentially means is like you can monitor per api level you can have an aggregate over it like hey if i have 50 requests coming for this how much is an average time all of this real-time analysis is being provided by the performance monitoring feature in, um, in MVIS. Um, we also provide sufficient plug points um, so through in the form of Fluentd. Um, mind you, Fluentd is not being part of the product, but you can install it as separately. And we will be able to push data to the Fluentd system, which internally then can be based on your use cases, can be, uh, you know, making it available to uh, to an alerting system like Nagios, like a big data where you can do your post analysis on it, typically a reporting point of view. You can have a log management system like Splunk or Elasticsearch, and then on top of it, a Kibana where you can do your log analysis. And for monitoring purpose also, like we have this Datadoc or Grafana kind of systems. So um, we are quite flexible over there. Um, all what you have to do is kind of install uh, a Fluentd system and provide uh, you know, the hooks to it. So that's it, what you require for an efficient logging and monitoring point of view. So MVS system is also very administrative friendly. What we mean by that, it is like, apart from the web console which we have provided um, to you know configure the system we also have provided rest endpoints for our admin apis so if you have your um, end application or you have your own um, administrative application and you want to enhance that thing that you want to monitor it uh, or configure mvis using it we have this rest endpoints uh, exposed so that can be one of the use cases for it um, we have, uh, you know, extensible flexible logging, as I highlighted before, and also we allow you to um, get information about the performance of the application and uh, make it available to uh, various providers like uh, AWS and Azure. So this picture gives you the complete idea of integration server architecture and components. So in the middle, you have our MVS system. On the top, you have the web-based application, mobile-based application, or even a middleware. So it serves all the three categories of application use cases. You have your web admin console for monitoring the application, configuring the application. You have API and DB logging monitoring, so you can get much more insights into um, the re requests which are being served by the MVS system. It serves a to help you to modernize your applications and last but not least is the scaling of the system so it allows it mbs it can be easily scalable and in case of sufficient strategies being created through the load balancer 
uh, one one can have a failover in case one of the primary system or primary MVS goes down. The same MVS, if you go down, is like is able to talk to multiple application servers. So you can have account-wise configurations. So what I meant by that is like account one, you can have, let's say minimum two or maximum of three. That may be the uh, use case for the account one data. For account two, which is heavily used by your end application, you can configure the minimum app pool to three or maximum to 10. So this is kind of the flexibility which MVIS provides to you. And this is again per app, MV application server. So you can have account three, account four, there is no limit to the part of uh, you know how many accounts you can have to serve your end goal. As we said before that it, the MVI system product was completely thought from the cloud native point of view. So what we mean by that it is very friendly from the container and orchestrator technologies. And we have a, you know, the possibility of having a shared cloud storage configuration for clustered MVIs. So you can spun up the instances and they can all share the uh, single storage configuration which is used for its configuration purposes. It has efficient um, API health checkpoints. So typically what happens is like you want to, in case of a Kubernetes based applications, they provide you this health check probes. So we are able to you know, plug to it and in that way, you can identify whether the system is healthy or not, or maybe you have your own monitoring solution and you want to see in your dashboard that the MVS instances which I have deployed, how many of them are running, what is their status and everything. So we have this API health checkpoints. And last but not least, we are uh, you know, shipping this as a container images. <clears throat> so let's delve more into the MVS connection pooling feature. Before going into the details of connection pooling, I just want to give you guys an overview of how a typical MVS deployment will look like. This is a sample deployment. It is by no means restricted to only to one application or one MVS, but just gives you an overview of various components. So that's why I made it very simple. So in the middle, you have an MVS system. You have an account pool or a connection pool, which is what we say, which are actually connecting to the MVDB server. You have configurations um, per account level. Like you can say, I want to have a min and max. We have the flexibility with the protocol. We support both REST protocol and DOJ protocol. And then there is a concept of service definitions. So uh, as you go further, um, we'll go into the details of, you know, um, sharing services, um, you know, that kind of flexibility is also being provided uh, in MVIS. You have an MVS admin, which is our web console, which is also exposed at the port 7077. The MVS system, the rest endpoint are exposed at the port 7171. So this is how a typical MVS deployment will look like. You can have MVS on one machine, admin um, uh, you know, on another machine, and you can configure um, uh, you know, your application on another machine. So that kind of all flexibilities are being available to you. Feature rich pooling. So what we mean by that is you can restart and reconfigure individual pools on the fly. So if you have see, observed that we have per account wise pools. So what it gives you flexibility that, hey, if, if my one of my account is not uh, performant and I want to change it, you don't have to restart the entire system. You are able to do it per account level. That provides you, you know, great um, flexibility in case of that you don't have to have a downtime for your applications um, or all the entire, um, you know, uh, rest endpoints. You can pinpoint to the accounts uh, or account in this case uh, which you want to reconfigure, and that is being done. Um, another point is that the pool restarts are applied cluster-wise. So if you have a cluster of MVI systems, and as long as you have configured uh, the shared configuration deployment model, uh, you are able to change and through the web admin one part of it, one account in the admin, and all of the MVS systems which are serving that or which are respecting it are automatically configured. So that is the beauty of it. The fast pool startup. So what happens is like typically even you have a connection pool concept, 
when you have, let's say, assume like 15 pool uh, connections configured. Um, the typical way is like let the, all the connections do come up and then I'll start servicing the request. With MVS, it's a little bit different. As soon as one connection in the pool is available, we start serving it. So what will happen in this case is that you will have a great response times and uh, you know you and a minimal downtimes also in case you're reconfiguring your pools. That is the flexibility provided by the connection pooling. Connection resiliency. So what we have are what do you say the three features um, which we want to highlight over here is like we have a keep alive. So we keep the connection, um, you know, continuous pinging from the MVI to so data server um, to prevent other connections from being terminated. So imagine that you have an MVI system being deployed on the cloud and you have your data server in one of your stores or in your on-premise, um, uh, you know, um, company um, solution. So in that case, some of the times, like if you're going through the wide area network, um, the individual routers may, you know, cut off the uh, connection because it's, if there's no traffic. So what we have is kind of a keep alive. So we keep a heartbeat going on. This is a very performant heartbeat. It's not like it's going to consume a lot of bandwidth for you. It is just pinging the server so that the connections are not being, the connection pipe is not being removed by in between routers and bridges. So that is a flexibility uh, or feature which we have for keep alive. It is a self healing in the sense in case of some of the connections go bad or are terminated, the system automatically regenerates the connections, obviously respecting your minimum and maximum configuration. So you don't have to have any manual intervention for it. We have sufficient health checkpoints, which kind of provide you, uh, you know, where the system is alive and thus uh, any solutions like orchestrator based solutions can you can take actions based on if the system is down, <clears throat> you have your own um, measures uh, being uh, configured that hey, I need to restart the system, I need to reconfigure, or I need to read out the traffic to another MBI system. So that kind of flexibility is being provided. So horizontal scaling. So what happens is like if you look on the left side, you have a single MPI system serving multiple database servers. You have your um, applications either in the form of web or mobile and everything. And let's assume that the load increases. So what you can do with the help of an orchestrator is like you can spun up uh, a new MVS instance and it automatically starts servicing your request. Obviously, you require a kind of a load balancing mechanism in between, which either can be done by the orchestrator or you can have your own load balancer. But the flexibility that MBS can spun up and uh, can be spun up by a new instance and can serve the traffic, uh, serve the traffic is is a, is a is a very important step. Graceful failover. So what we mean by that is like let's assume that you have an MBS in production. You have, you know, an MV app server, um, which is, you know, one is like a hot one and one other MV app server is a cold and idle one. So we want to re read out the traffic. Now we want to say that, hey, I want to go for a maintenance purpose for MV app server production and I want to do some, um, you know, uh, maintenance activities on it. So I want to read out the traffic for it. So what I have to do is I have to reconfigure uh, in the MVI system that, okay, you start uh, pulling up the data to the second MVF server. But what happens to the traffic which is already in uh, is running? So MVI system takes care that existing ongoing traffic till it reaches to its logical endpoint, that connections will be served and any new connections which will be happening will be now talking to the uh, new production server. So it provides you a kind of a graceful failover uh, and that's what also what we say is like a blue-green blue deployment model. So this slide provides you uh, your kind of a apples to oranges comparison of connection pools created by custom custom uh, connection pools created by yourself and connection pools with MVIS. So what will happen is like all the accounts share the same max and minimum definitions, whereas in case of MVIS, yeah, you get it ready-made that you can have a min and max granular level control for setting up the min and max connection pool. Um, there you have to have your own mechanisms created uh, in your code to prevent idle connections from being terminated and that is being uh, available um, by default uh, as a feature in the MVS connection pooling. So um, you need to restart the you know 
um, server. Uh, in that case, it impacts all the accounts. Whereas in over here, you can start, stop, and uh, enable, disable um, per account level. Do your maintenance activities and uh, and other activities, other accounts will be still served by the MVS system. Need to wait for the connections to be available. All the connections here in our case, um, the pool starts servicing request as soon as the one of the connections is available. So what we are essentially trying to say is that um, all of this work which one needs to do if one directly uses the connection pool, their own custom or homegrown connection pool as compared to the MVS connection pool availability. So let me give you a technical specification point, point of view. Um, it, it's by no means an exhaustive thing. It's just trying to tell you that, hey, we have certified uh, MVS 130, um, the alpha release uh, with Windows Server 2012, Rail 7, and AIX system. Uh, what you require on your system when you're installing MVS is support for Python 3.7. Um, uh, we are very specific with Python 3.7 version, and we have certified that. Uh, we, uh, you require OpenJDK 1.8, and the database systems, the database servers which we have certified are Universe 11.3.1 and Unidata 8.2.1. So let me show you how to install MVIS on a Windows system. I have you, I'm using the CMDR utility, the command line utility, but one can use anything like from the Windows command prompt, anything. But important is to make sure that you run this um, command line with administrative privilege. So you say run an CMD and with uh, an administrative. That is what is important when, uh, when, when we are installing MVIS. So typically what you will be seeing when you have downloaded the alpha package, um, the build numbers may be different, but for us in the sense like you have here these two tarballs, CM and CM admin, um, there is a package called as MVS install 130 and pip packages. A check on the system um, prerequisites again is like you require Python version 3.7 and Java version is OpenJDK 1.8.0.252. So now let me run a simple command. So you are in that directory where you have um, downloaded the MVIS. You simply run Python complete install and install. So it will start installing uh, certain pa Python packages into your Python environment. So what it is doing right now is it's installed the Python packages for you. It's asking you for a confirmation for the license agreement. You say yes to it. So once you have set, it is gonna ask you um, the, on which directory you want to install the MVS. So let me select only the default one. So just hit enter. If you want to use uh, cloud services, please enter Azure, AWS, or um, just press enter. So for our purposes, um, we're just gonna enter non-cloud mode. But once you have entered Azure, or AWS, it's gonna ask you uh, various configuration keys required uh, when you are deploying um, MVIs into the Azure or AWS environment. So for our Current purpose, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm, I'm installing on a Windows system. It's an on-prem, so I just hit enter. Then it starts unpacking it, the multi-value control into the U2CM folder. It installs, it creates. It now asks you whether you would like to start uh, the multi-value intuition server admin process, which is our web console. You say yes to it. It's trying to start it, and you have installed multi-value integration server uh, onto your system. So let's see how where it has installed and how the directory structure looks like. So I've opened um, a Windows Explorer. So let me go 
to C colon and I go to the U2 CM folder. So I have here a previous backup copies, but so you have your license. The logs are captured inside the logs folder. Here you will see that you have an MDS admin log and also the C uh, log folder for once I start the CM MDS server. You have your U2, U2 rest folder and you have uh, the important files which you want to highlight is the cm.ini file uh, and um, uh, you know the application of properties so let me first show you how the thing looks like on the browser so i can go over here i can type in localhost 707 i, ha I have to log in with admin and the password default password is admin again and you have your uh, MBIS uh, system admin installed on this machine so once you have it what it said they told you is like it has started the MB admin but not uh, the Ad MBIS server so click on here start it will take a couple of seconds and you have your uh, MBI system running on it. So there are various configurations. So accounts, um, securities, and uh, other aspects of it. And the important is the REST server, which is also running for it. So I hope this gives you an idea of how to install MBIS and how is it easy to uh, uh, you know, just bring it up um, on your Windows system.